Orchid pot puri, orchid pot puri. Hello, hello. Few little odd jobs here and there to do today. Thank you for letting me talk to you. Even though from the offset, it looks like I'm talking to my edge here. But um, yeah, here are my panaricas, formerly known as prostechias, formerly known as epidendrums, and any other names they might have acquired over the course of the centuries, I don't know. But uh, what I'm doing with them today is just wiping down their leaves with some lemon water because I never did this when they arrived. And then I thought, well, you know what, just leave it because there's enough light during the summer. I'm not saying that dust is a good thing on leaves, but during the summer, it really isn't that big a deal. During the winter, it's a good thing to keep the leaves somewhat clean so that they can photosynthesize easier. So I'm doing something I should have done a long time ago and just left it because it was convenient to do so. And that's all I'm going to do. Then, after I've done this, I am going to check on one of my Myrmacatabola Francis Fox, or Echara Francis Fox. She has been, she was the cat I got from eBay. Let me see, who did I get? Oh, Olympus. Yeah, why not? But uh, she came as a back division and never really kicked off. Both mine didn't. My Schwerter one is still a struggling one and I did a like a replenish repot on her um, throughout the summer when the new growth was showing signs of new roots. So I'm not gonna touch her. She doesn't need anything done. She just needs to find, figure out if she's gonna become healthy and grow or not. Whereas this one from Olympus, you can see I still have, maybe you can't see, but I still have one of my very old supports, the taped wire ones. I'm gonna take her out because she is going, she's been growing roots for the past five, six weeks. I've been noticing her root growth and I didn't want to interfere. I wanted her to get a little bit more settled. I had a lot of other things to do that I needed to get to that needed much more immediate attention. But now in the orchid potpourri where the remaining little odd jobs are still left to be done, I thought, why not take her out? Let's have a look together. And I may actually clean her up to the point I'll take off the back if need be. It'd be interesting to see what's going on in the pot. She has not been taken out of the pot since she arrived. So that would be one thing. And then, time permitting, at the end, I'm going to show you my little Phalaenopsis cakey and an Ecolomy update. That has been a while as well since we looked into this substrate and I took a Phalaenopsis cakey that I had gotten established, <laughs> of all things, into my LECA and self-watering. It, it actually took and had some gorgeous roots. And then instead of just leaving it, I thought, okay, no, here, I'm going to test it with Colomy. And I really, you know, if you've been in my channel long enough, you know my ups and downs with complex fouls in Lekka and self-watering. So, um, yeah, that was a bit of a, an oxymoron of what I did there. But uh, I want to show that to you as well. So thank you very, very much for watching me, for coming here. I appreciate it. This encrustation from the nursery is quite, quite solid. It, uh, it's not easily coming off. I can really feel it crusty, crusty. So what I do, instead of upping the concentration of the lemon, what I do is um, do it several times in different phases. So before this one is due to come in, at least I've done the first, let's say, layer of crust. And then I'll take care of it one more time. And then whatever stays, stays. But at least the majority of the leaves are off. So since they've arrived in my collection, 
They are, they've been in uh, shade most of the day, bright, bright shade next to my Andracums. And then even in the hot summer months, the angle of the sun would expose them to afternoon, late evening sun. But they were new, so I didn't want to start to show them what their future will hold. But you can see, look how, let me, let me see if you can see this. Dun, dun, dun. The angle of the sun is blocking my view. There, you see the color of the leaves there? That's where the sun didn't reach, that's where the sun reached, and that was the position of the leaf that was covering it. So, light-wise, they had plenty, despite not having exposure to sun as such. Which also shows me that my Angracums are in a great place there over the summer, thanks to my fabulous umbrella donator. That is gonna be superb for the years to come using that area for them. I know they're getting enough light without having any, any direct sun to burn their leaves. So that is the same with these guys. In order to bloom, they need maybe more light than I have been giving them, but we'll get there. As you can see here, this new growth has just started with when it was in my collection. It was a little, little nubbin like that when it arrived. It took some time to get going, but the orchid is pop bound. And that's been, what, two months? I'll have to check, I'll put up a card from when I was unboxing these guys. Two months, I think, three months maybe. Still, in one season, pot bound. I think it's awesome. Taking up the mask and all, that means the roots in there are expanding and holding onto the mask as well. Oh, and this is, sorry about this, this is Prostechia ionocentra, this one. And this is, did I just say Prostechia? I'm still, anyway, yeah, my tags say Prostechia. So, Panarica ionocentra and Panarica brassavola. Now you can see I've got staining underneath the leaves here, but I'm gonna leave that on. I do not touch the underside of the leaves with lemon water or anything of the sort. So they are just going to be given this little first cleanup. And then I will do it one more time a little bit further down the road. You can see that some of the calcium deposits or fertilizer deposits from the nursery, they're pretty stubborn marks to get off, but hey, the first layer is done. Whoops, we missed one. And let's get to Mirmecatavola, or Rechara, Francis Fox, from Olympus. I want to get her cleaned up so that next year I don't have to think twice about how her root health will be in this setup. All right, all right, all right. Okay, here we go again. There's a root stuck to the side of the pot. Let's get rid of the support first. Uh, okay. And it's a nice one. Come on out. There we go. That was easy. Good stuff. Now I didn't soak this pot. I don't think it was necessary because this orchid hasn't done much root growth wise over the years. It has given me some growth, but it was always sad and weak. So I didn't think I needed to soak it. And unless I've made a big, big error in judgment that they've all stuck to the side of the pot, the new ones, then we are okay to just pull it out. <laughs> she says, <laughs> that is, yeah, I'm surprised. 
pleasantly surprised. Like, really surprised. <laughs> Let's just give this a hose down. Okay, wow. You know what? Above the orchid was not showing me that this was happening down below. But yeah, it's good. This is good. Let me just pick out some of the moss. And I'll show you. Whoop, you go in here. What I've been watching and observing. Oh, this is going to be another one of those wonderful Lekka cleanup jobs. Oof, moss, getting moss off Lekka. That's okay. I needed to do this for my fall prep anyway. As much as I like moss during the summer around and on top of my Lekka, which helps me really, really well with my dry layer, my lack of humidity and my climate, I don't need it that much in winter. It can sort of like take a back seat for winter. <laughs> Less concern. Well, 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 Francis Fox, you are full of surprises. And I thank you for it because I was not expecting to see a good root system where I would have to do a little bit of cleanup, which I'm going to do. But all in all, for something that I thought was going to only have a few roots coming down here, maybe from this one as well. But look at the root system that this one has generated. Because these bulbs in the back, they weren't really busy and active at all. Because I got her like this. Thank you for dropping in the bowl. I got her like these back parts here and then grew two minis in the subsequent season. And these three bulbs were a bit more substantial, so. Oh, this is good. So I'm just going to go about cleaning this up. As you do. Happy days. I'm going to keep the microfiber, but I'm not going to, oh, maybe I can reuse this lecker. Yes, I can do that. The lecker that's in the pot, it's okay, but I have to clean the pot. So my goodness, I am so happy that I can be this radical because if I, if I show you, look at this root system. If I have a finicky root system, I cut around the microfiber in order to save the root. And then I save the root and sometimes I also manage to save the microfiber. And I was starting to do that because of the branching habit that it's got. And then I saw it's growing through the microfiber. Check this out. That is incredible. Can you see that? <laughs> well, I am, I'm glad I have the luxury to say, no, that's fine. There's plenty more where you came from, so. You can go, yeah, really pleased, really pleased. And boy, am I lucky that it didn't have any problems coming out of the pot considering I didn't soak it because I was speculating on not having any roots, a few roots that I saw growing recently. So, no, this is good, I'm happy. I didn't have to do much maintenance, just being picky. And the fact that I can be picky very very woody roots very sturdy there's not much you can't tell a good from a bad one unless of course it's white but um, don't be fooled if this is one of the ones you have and you're not sure some you can tell and you can just chop off randomly because you know not with these guys even the ones that are back here the orchid actually started to develop roots in the rhizome in the back that had nothing when I got her. There was nothing back here. Ah, no, wrong. There's still nothing back here. All these nice roots are coming from the itty bitty two growths that I then grew in my first season with her. All right. Foxy, foxy. I'll take it. Happy days, and I was gonna chop some off in the back, but I'm not going to. There's fantastic roots. She needs all the energy she can get. But what I am going to do 
is give her a bigger pot. Initially, I thought I was going to put her back in the smaller pot, but no, this development deserves to be recognized and her potential has now got to expand for next year. She's got great eyes coming. I don't know if this growth that I grew this summer is going to bloom or not, but never mind. It's, it's getting there. She is starting to make sense. And then all I can say, I hope it's a Francis Fox. <laughs> Knowing Olympus, gosh, I might have something here. I don't even know what it is. And then we're back to saying, hello, can anybody help? There's something in there that I'm not quite happy with. So we'll get you out. I mean, out. All right, I shall be potting her up. Happy days. Very, very happy to see this. Look at her starting to settle down in her nice shiny new pot. Nice shiny new support. And yes, I do have a support for eventualities. But this one doesn't even need to be attached to the support. She is solid. She has really come unto her own in the past years with me. I'm so happy. These two little growths definitely were just the beginning of something very, very beautiful. It took a long time. It took a long time, but Rechara Francis Fox. Woohoo! Welcome to Ninja Orchids. You are a go, lady. You are a go. Very happy. So we got her taken care of. I'm leaving her a little bit lower. I can always then fill up more leka as more roots grow. If I think they're becoming too aerial for my liking, I can fill her up and then sort of force the roots to do what I want because they'll be covered anyway. So right now, perfect. Happy, happy, happy. Wonderful surprise. I'm glad I filmed this because I was actually dubious thinking, no, not another one. And I just thought somebody might be interested. I can assure you that I am glad that I filmed this because I was not expecting this. Despite thinking I know my orchids, I've observed my orchids and boom, what do you know? Superb. Fertilizer water goes in. Nothing else was addressed. New pot. Let's bloom. El año que viene, let's bloom. There it is. The Phalaenopsis cakey. Walter Jr. in Colomy since two months. <laughs> Sorry, I'll put up a card to get it specific. Colomy only, no fertilizer. The only difference that I am doing based on what they don't say in the instruction of the product is the RO water I'm using to flush. I am not using tap water because my tap water is diabolical. It's of the devil for orchids. So they don't say anything about quality of water, type of water. There is nothing in their specs, their instructions on water quality. So for my peace of mind, and not to make them look bad, but for my peace of mind, what I do know is that my tap water, no way, is going into a pot touching roots that I don't even know the product and how it will respond. That's the only thing I'm doing. I think they just assume that everybody uses tap water. The only difference here. So let's have a look. This was the root right here that was growing in Lekka. And it was doing so well. And I was like, oh yeah, whatever. And it has gone brown and it is deteriorating, and I don't really want to tip it too much. I don't want everything to fall out. Uh, let me see how far I can go. But you can see, oh, there we go, it's starting. You can see the root itself is not growing anymore the way it was. But look at what else is going on. I had two really good roots in the Lekka when I transitioned it here into Colomy. 
but they weren't up here. There was this one, to my understanding, because I can see the lecker is still attached because I didn't remove that. But this one is new and it's looking very healthy, very nice. This one is extending. You can actually see where the root ended and then started to grow again. And then back here, there should have been something because I see a lecker ball. So that means there is a root which is now down here. And I think maybe it stopped growing but has started again. So you can see that the roots that are growing in this that weren't super, super established minus the long one that was really established in the lecker, they're doing okay. The orchid isn't suffering. There is no sign of dehydration. And I've only filled up the little bottom bit with the sprayer twice. It's quite heavy though. Twice since we changed the setup to test this stuff. So it's just plain RO water, not seaweed or anything like that. And just I spray around the surface, around the edge. I don't want to get anything in the crown at this time of year. A couple of months ago, I was a bit more radical because it was hotter and breezier and, you know, things just dried out. But even during the hot and breezy months, it took me forever to then do it again, which was a couple of weeks ago. Just sprayed around the top and waited for a little bit of water to settle on the bottom. And that's, that's it. That's all they say in the instruction. That's how you do it. So this stuff should be against funguses and pests and any of that. Never mentioned algae, but you can see how it's got algae on the bottom. And yeah, I'm not saying I'm not surprised. I am kind of surprised because if this thing was as good, like no funguses or molds or anything like that can develop, how come algae can survive? But they do say that it has a certain component of fertilizer in it, which I can't measure. I couldn't measure in my little test but you see, the light is coming from this direction. That's how I have it standing on the shelf. The light is coming from over there. And there's no algae in the back. So she's not doing badly. And I'm going to let, or he, as it's a Walter, is not doing badly. The roots are growing. And I'll be very interested to see once they reach the bottom, if they will then become the water roots. And as far as I'm concerned, so far, call me as a go. I don't like the look of the algae, but that can be changed. You put it in a darker pot. The only thing about this product is that they, they do advertise the beauty and the aesthetical aspect of it because it comes in several different rainbow colors. So with all those colors, you want a glass container in order to see the beautiful colors and have a pretty display with your orchid. Personally, it's not my thing. That's why I went with the white one. But um, yeah, and let me show you my other candidates. It's not an orchid. <laughs> no, it's not an orchid. But these are the ones I put in two years ago because they came as stowaways in one of my orchid pots. They are actually, I, I don't know what kind of a desert um, plant this is, but it's gorgeous. I love it. I used to have a giant of these. So these little guys were tiny little grapes when they came as a stowaway into, in an orchid pot that was on a rescue table. And um, back in the day when I was, I wanted Colomy, I wanted the white stuff, but it wasn't available. So I got green and instead of white, they sent me blue because it wasn't available. But I took the green and I thought, well, hey, let's put these guys into the green Colomy. Now the green has faded. So if you're interested in with your color schemes and think of trying Colomy, whoops, stick around. Don't expose the colony to the sun because this was a spring green color and clearly now it looks, you know, like a matte gray. No fertilizer for these guys for two years. Meanwhile, okay, it's not the proper comparison either because it's a desert plant. They don't need much. But uh, this is what I do with them. And I've repotted them once. And then I just spray down until it runs out of onto the saucer below. So these guys have never seen direct sun. They've always been shady because they are seedlings. But hey, in Colomy. So I thought I'd just bring them along and show you because we saw them in the first, in the first uh, Let's Talk Colomy update. And 
they are rooted in. Totally rooted in. Happy as Larry, whoever he was. But he was happy, so there we go. Happy as Larry. <laughs> right, there's a fantastic thread of comments from Snow Dragonka on my Let's Talk Call Me video. Amazing. I'm going to obviously link the video in my description, and if you want to, just go to the video and, you know, pause it or watch it, whatever you want to do. But if you're more interested about the chemical makeup or she has a lot of details in that comment thread between her and myself. I'm going to link the video. If you want, check those comments. Snow Dragonka, I'll put it on the screen. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Very knowledgeable. And yes, it makes sense. It's not something that I can repeat, but when I read it, I'm like going, yep, that ticks the box. So if you're interested, go down there and have a look. Meanwhile, just to end it off quickly, I do have plans for this channel. Um, and I will try and do a video that's somewhat interesting, but I want to address a few things that I've been thinking of doing and run them by you. And uh, yeah, see how we can progress with some of the ideas I've got cruising through my head. I might as well mention them now and then make it a joint project and see where we get to and what we can do with it. I've been taking notes. I'm gonna try and make a very interesting little video with just here's a thought, what do you think? And, and I hope to get your feedback because the channel is more about you really and my orchids than it is about me. So as these little guys don't have much to say <laughs> in my collection, I'm the boss. But uh, when it comes to the channel, you're the boss. So I look forward to posting that video at some point when I've collected my thoughts. Again, thank you so very, very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.